The owner of this JL bought a pre-built Rubicon from his dealer. Now that he's been wheeling it hard, he's ready for some serious upgrades to tackle some tough terrain. Follow along as we transform this thing from a dealership princess to an off-road trail machine. So when the owner of this Jeep came in, we had a good conversation about what this Jeep looked like when he bought it. And it had a bunch of really cool looking accessories, uh, bumpers, a suspension, some fuel wheels, and some 35 inch tall tires. And to be honest, the Jeep looked really, really good. A lot of the parts were made by Rough Country and Rough Country is a great provider for a lot of parts. We sell and install Rough Country every single day in Jeeps and trucks and all sorts of vehicles. But for this guy, after a couple hard wheeling trips, he decided it was time for some serious upgrades. So we turned to Metal Cloak for some serious hardcore off-road parts. We decided to go with their three and a half inch game changer lift and their suspension because he already had their full skid plate system on it. And those parts are just the beginning. Follow along as we show you this entire build from start to finish. So I just put this ring gear on the hot plate, uh, just making her as hot as possible so it expands a little and has an easier time uh, fitting on the carrier when we go to bolt it up. Slides right on. All right, it's Friday afternoon. We've all been laughing about John and his slippers, but enough of that. We've got this JL up on the rack and Grant is finishing the diffs. We've got both front and rear axles all torn down and all back together. And he's putting the RCV axle shafts in. One thing that we noticed that was a little bit different about the RCVs was their grease fitting. Normally they did a flush mount grease fitting that, had a, that required a needle zerk. Uh, these ones just are a traditional zerk fitting, which is convenient. Um, the Jeep already has Metal Cloak's full skid plate system, which is cool. Uh, Eric, while Grant's wrapping that up, is assembling steering. So we've got a uh, drag link and tie rod here on the cart. Of course, we anesthetized all of these threads, so he unthreaded those. I saw he was working on some control arms as well. Uh, as soon as Grant gets this thing down, uh, Eric's going to take over and get the rest of the suspension all done. Um, after that, kind of phase three, we're going to do tires, wheels, and some flares. So I'm excited to see this entire build come to fruition from start to finish. It's going to be a pretty dramatic difference from the kit that's on it now in the 35s to 37s and a full functioning long travel metal cloak system. We wrapped up these diffs with a uh, diff covers from metal cloak, both front and rear. The rear actually already had the cradle on it, I believe. And so we just did a heavy duty cover and then the front's got their heavy duty cover and the skid that goes on it, which Grant is going to model for us exactly how to hold it up. 
So uh, that gets bolted right onto these bosses so it integrates the cover to the housing to make a really strong, sturdy skid plate system. The guy uses it a ton off-road. He's been out west with it. He's got more trips to go out west and he wheels a lot here on the northeast. So we like to see that Jeeps that actually get out, get used hard and get used for what they're built for. So phase two is going to happen here shortly. These e-lockers, the journal for the top carrier bearing sticks out further than it needs to, I guess. And your chin can't get past that unless you make it, and then it makes metal everywhere. So the good idea is to put this shim on first, stick the whole thing in, and then knock the bottom one in, which doesn't have that. So if someone's doing it like at home or something and doesn't realize that, you can like have trouble trying to put in this upper thing and you don't realize why, and you can cause a bunch of issues. marking factory ones you they have a way to clock them clock the coil springs on there the replacement metal cloak one doesn't so we just mark it damp the coil spring close to the same spot yoke the flange and then we will do the front drive shaft. So Tom Woods can get our drive shaft made up. We're going to the center of the U-joint on here on the cap on the yoke. Alright, this one we're going from the factory flange. Right on down here. 36 and a half. Oh cool. Flange face the center of the U-joint on the yoke. Yeah. Alright. All right, I'll call them here today. They're in Utah, so you get them ordered up. Hopefully, a couple days will happen. Sounds good.
We've got the JL Rubicon all wrapped up, and I think this project turned out awesome. It was really fun following this thing through the shop to see this thing transform into the Jeep that is today. I'm excited for the owner to get this thing out on the trail and wheel it hard exactly like he wants to. He's got some trips planned out west and fully expect to use this thing to its fullest capacity. Just for a recap, we did Metal Cloak's three and a half inch game changer kit. We did some 488 gears. We've got these new Toyo 37 inch RT trails and the Dirty Life convertible wheels that can be made into a beadlock in the future. The guys got some plans in the future for different bumpers, so I'm sure we're gonna be adding those down the road. It's got metal cloak steering, diff covers, and full metal cloak skid plates, so I don't know that there's a whole lot missing. What do you think? Is there anything missing? What would you add? Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to follow us on all of our social platforms. Like, comment, and share. Thanks for watching.